look. Oh, thank you, Angel. Oh, hi, boys and girls. It's me, Mrs. Salmon. I'm just out taking a walk with Ryan. Hi. Hi. We're talking about what we're going to do in our next lesson. Isn't this landscape amazing, Ryan? Yeah. It reminds me of a painting. You know, artists love to look around them to get inspiration. What inspires you when you go outside? This beautiful landscape certainly is an inspiration for art. I think I've just been inspired. Ryan, do you see that tiny tree? Yeah. When you see a tree from a distance, it looks really small. Do you think that tree is actually that tiny? Hmm. Are we in Munchkin land? I hope not. Let's go see. That tree is so tiny, Ryan, that you can fit it between your hands. Do you see that? Yeah. What in the world? Look at that. We're a little bit closer to the tree now, Ryan. Is it growing? It does look bigger. Now that we're standing in front of the tree, we see it's actually really big. It's not small at all, is it? No. This is what we call perspective. Things that are far away look smaller and things that are close up look bigger. Look at this gorgeous landscape. Now the trees in the distance aren't tiny trees. They just appear small because they're far away. We can create the same illusion in our drawings. Using perspective is like using magic. It's art magic. Today we're going to do line drawings and make landscape pictures. I'll talk to you more about perspective as well. Are you ready to get started? Come on, let's go home and do art. Do art. Do art. Doodly do. Do art. Do art. Doodly do. Just grab your paper and your pencil too. You can grab your scissors, markers, and your glue. You can do art. You can doodly do. Do art. Do art. Doodly do. Do art. Do art. Do what? Art. You're smart. Today we are going to draw landscapes. We are going to create our landscapes by doing a line drawing. I'm also going to teach you how to use perspective in your landscape drawing. Some of my favorite landscape drawings were done by an artist named Vincent Van Gogh. Van Gogh is one of the world's most loved artists. His works have inspired artists for generations. Maybe today his art will inspire you. Van Gogh's style of painting creates movement. His use of perspective creates depth. We are going to use that same movement and depth in our landscape pictures today. Let's talk about what you'll need for today's lesson. It's on the board behind me. You'll need a pencil, a white piece of paper, some colored markers, and a rubber. Now if you have all of those things together, you're ready to start on your landscape. Look at these beautiful landscape paintings from Van Gogh. These are just a few examples of Van Gogh's art. In just 10 years, he produced over 2,000 works of art. Isn't that impressive? Van Gogh was painting the landscapes where he lived in France. You can see that he was inspired by the world around him. Van Gogh once said, I dream of painting and then I paint my dream. I love this. I feel inspired now. How about you? Let's take this inspiration from Van Gogh and start working on our own landscape creations. Okay, first things first, we're going to fold our paper in half. Now we're only going to use half of our piece of paper for our landscape drawings. So we're making a nice fold there. And now that you've folded it, you'll see that you have a second sheet underneath that will protect your work surface or your table from any of the markers going through the paper. Okay, let's begin. First, make sure your paper is in the landscape position, not the portrait position, but the landscape position, which is quite fitting as we're doing landscape pictures. Now take your pencil and we're going to draw four hills on our piece of paper. We're gonna start on this side 
just below the center of our paper, we're going to make our first till. So we're going to draw a line across our paper and down. You can make it a little bit curved if you like. So that's our first till. Now we're going to go to the other side of the paper and draw our second hill, another curved line coming off the side and touching the top of that first till. That's our second hill. Now go back to this side just above where you started the first one and draw another curved line for your third hill. Now your fourth hill will be a line connecting these two. Let's make it a nice curved line connecting one hill to the other. Now these are your four hills. Now look at these hills. Above the hills is going to be our sky and later we're going to draw a sun in our sky but we're going to do that with markers not with our pencil. So we are finished for this part. Put your pencils down. Now let's talk about color. I have lots of colored markers here. I like Sharpies the best, but whatever kind of marker you have, it will be great. Make sure you also have a black and a brown marker. We're going to use those for our trees later. It's good to plan out your drawing, so let's decide what color our hills will be and what color our sky will be. First, our sky. Once we're finished coloring our hills, we're going to draw a sun above them in our sky. We're going to use three colors for the sun. So let's choose those colors first. I'm thinking of the colors of a beautiful sunset. When you close your eyes, can you remember what colors you see in a sunset? Let's choose orange, pink, and yellow for our sun. That would be a perfect sunset. We'll put those aside to make sure we don't use those colors for our hills. Now let's choose some different colors for our hills. Let's make our hills really colorful. I count that I've drawn four hills. One, two, three, four. How many have you drawn? As I have four hills, I'll need four colors. I'm going to choose blue, green, red, and purple. You can choose whatever colors you want. You can also repeat colors in your hills or use different colors for each one. I want to explain that for our landscape drawing, instead of coloring it in like you would a traditional picture, we're going to do what's called a line drawing. Instead of making solid colors between the lines, we draw lines. It creates a very unique look. The lines can appear to be changing direction. They can appear to be moving on the paper. You'll see what I mean soon. So now we've chosen our colors and we're ready to start on coloring our landscape drawing. Now don't forget, as we folded our paper in half, we do have a second layer underneath. But if you want to be safe and protect your pens from going through your paper, you can always put an extra sheet underneath your picture to protect your table or work surface. We will work on one hill at a time. You can start on any hill you like and in any color you like. Remember, we're using the four colors for our four hills. If you have five hills, you can use five colors if you'd like. I'm going to start with purple. I'll move my other colors aside and I'm going to choose which hill will be purple. I will start here. So I'm going to take my purple pen and I'm going to trace over my pencil line. Okay, now as this is a line drawing, we're not coloring each hill in, we're going to make lines. Now I'm going to follow that line I just made with my purple pen and I'm going to do another one exactly the same underneath. And I'm going to do that again and again and again until my hill is filled with lines. Make sure you're always following the curve, the same curve that your hill started with. Okay, and go all the way down and around. We're almost finished. A couple more lines. Okay, and now we are finished 
with our first hill. Now I'm ready to color my second hill. I'm going to choose green. Now the hill that I will color green is this large one here. So I'm going to do the same thing I just did with my purple pen and use my green pen to trace over the pencil line that I've drawn. All the way down and I've got a little bit of a curve there to the end of my paper. And I'll do exactly the same thing as I did with my purple pen. I'm going to go follow that green line all the way down and keep repeating this until my hill is full. Make sure you're following the curve of your pen with each line. Now if I'm going too quickly or you need a little bit more time, you can always pause the video. I want you to take your time and make a beautiful painting. Okay, we're almost done. And that's it. Put the green pin away and we'll go for the next one. Okay, so I am going to choose my third color, which is going to be red. And I'm going to work on my third hill, which will be this one. Now remember, you can choose whichever hill you want. I'm just working around my picture. So I'm going to work on this third hill and again, follow my pencil line all the way around and down. Do the same thing with the next line and the next line. This pen is running out of ink, but it's the only red one I have and I definitely wanted to use it. I'm hoping it will last. There we go. Okay, and I have a little bit of a mess up here, but that's okay. And you see how we have pencil lines that we can always erase at the end. So I've got one more hill to draw and I'm going to use my last color, which is blue. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing, tracing over my pencil line and repeating that curved line again and again and again and again until my hill is full. Okay, and we're finished with our hills. Now for the sun. You remember we're going to create a sunset. We're using yellow, pink, and orange for the sun. Let's first take our yellow marker. We're going to draw a small circle above our hills just a small circle and we're going to actually color it in in yellow. It's the only thing in our picture that we're actually coloring in. So I want you to draw a small circle and color it in yellow like this. Okay, now we are going to take our yellow marker and draw rings around our yellow sun. Let's draw two or three rings. So watch me one ring and a second ring. Just bigger circles around your sun. Okay, so now we've got two yellow rings around our sun. Let's put our yellow marker down and pick up our orange marker. Now we're going to do the same thing and draw orange rings around the yellow ones. Okay, watch me. Here we go one orange ring. Now you take your time doing this because I know drawing circles is not easy. Now that's one orange ring and I'm going to try to get another one around without touching anything. But look what happens. There's a hill there. So I'm going to stop there and just carry on where there's no hill and go back up 
and around. And I don't want to run off my paper, but that's exactly what we're trying to do. So now we've done two yellow rings, two orange rings. We can't make any more circles around the sun, but we're going to change our colors. We're going to pick up our pink marker, and now we're going to do pink rings around the sun. But because we can't make complete circles, we're just going to do half circles. So we'll do a pink ring on this side, and we'll do a pink ring on this side. And see how I'm curving it around? We'll do another pink ring on this side, and another pink ring on this side. All right. We're going to put down our pink and we're going to pick up our yellow again. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw a yellow line next to the pink and another one over here and another one on this side. And then let's do a few here. Let's do one, two, three, let's do one more, four. Okay, now we're putting the yellow down. We're going to pick up the orange again. Let's do the same thing, but with the orange lines. One, two orange lines. Let's do one more, one more orange line. Okay, and how about the pink again? Here we go, let's do one pink, another pink. I'm going to do another yellow. Look what we're doing. We are creating rings around our sun, which give it the impression of heat. Makes our sun look super hot. So I just did yellow, and let me just do orange. I'm going to do the, all the rest of them in orange. I'm going to follow around. Just do the rest of the page orange. This is just going to look so cool when we stop and see what we've done. Look at our drawing so far. Now the rings that we just drew around the sun make our sun look even bigger and hotter. It's given our picture drama. Look at the hills. The lines we drew make the hills look like they're rolling forwards and backwards. Do you see that in your picture? Now we will draw trees in our landscape. This is when we talk about perspective. So don't start making your trees just yet. Make sure to follow me. Let's have your black, brown, and green markers ready. Now you can choose to draw your trees with either black, making them more striking and wintry trees, or you could choose brown and make your tree spring-like with leaves. I will choose brown as it is indeed spring and we have lots of leaves on the trees outside. We're going to draw three trees. One in the background of our picture, one in the middle ground of our picture, and one in the foreground of our picture. Foreground means the front. First, we'll start with drawing a tree in the background. Let's put our tree on top of this middle hill. This tree will be the smallest of the three. Now this is perspective. The smaller the object is, the farther away it appears. Along with making it small, we will draw this tree higher up in our picture, in our background. Let's begin. So let's choose the color we're going to start our trees with. Again, I'm choosing brown. All right, I am going to show you a really easy way to draw a tree. Remember, this first tree that we're drawing is going to be small. Okay, we're starting on the middle hill in the background of our picture. Now, I'm going to draw the letter Y, and it's going to be small, remember? Can you recognize that? It looks like the letter Y or a Y. Now you can draw a Y or a Y on top of that hill. And remember, keep it small. Now for the branches, we're just going to draw more little Y's or more little Y's to make our branches. 
there we go. See how small it is? And now, to make it look more like a tree, I'm going to thicken up the trunk a bit. I'm just going to make it a little bit wider at the bottom. Okay, and we're going to put our leaves on it later. So for now, we're finished with our first tree. How does it look? Now we can draw a tree in the middle ground of our picture. This tree will be medium sized. It will be bigger than the tree we just drew, but we still want it to appear to be far away. So we're not drawing it too big and it will sit in our middle ground. We'll make it the same way as we did before by drawing a capital Y. Now make your branches of the Y. Now we're going to fatten our tree up. We're going to make the trunk a bit bigger. Okay, and we're going to make more Y's for branches. Little Y's, long Y's, or Y. Can you see that? Are you making little Y's on yours? All right, it's a great way to draw a tree. Super easy. Now let's just fatten those branches up a bit as the tree is closer to us. We can see it better. And branches on a tree are usually a little bit fatter than that. Okay, and again, we will do our leaves a bit later. How does that look? Good. How does your tree look? Okay. okay. Now we're ready to draw our third and final tree. This tree is going to go in the foreground of our picture. This will be the biggest tree that we've drawn so far. Let's draw our capital Y and make our branches. Do you see how much bigger that is? There we go, there's our capital Y. We'll make our little Y branches. Okay, now I'm going to definitely fatten my trunk up as this tree is a big one. So you can do the same. And the good thing that the marker is brown, it colors over very easily for our other colors. I'm sure it does as, on yours as well. So let's make those branches a little bit fatter. Yeah, nice fat branches to hold our lovely leaves and any birds that might fly by and want to sit on it. Great. Okay, it looks like we are finished with our final tree. Now let's take our green marker and make some leaves. You don't have to draw leaves on your tree. If you use black instead of brown, it actually looks really cool with no leaves on the trees. I'll do some leaves on mine though, so follow along if you want to make some as well. For this back tree in the background, our smallest tree, all you need to do really is make little dots because it's so tiny you can't really see. So little dots are my leaves on that one. For the medium sized tree, it's pretty much the same. Just some dots for leaves. Not too many, I'm just going to put a few here and there. And it gives our picture a little bit more color as well, which is nice. But again, if your trees are black and dramatic, that is also really cool. Okay, and now for our last bigger tree. Now this tree, I'm going to make teardrop shapes for my leaves because they can be a little bit bigger. So little teardrop shapes make nice leaves. All the way around my tree. How's yours looking? I hope you liked the way we made our trees with the capital Y. 
I think that's a really great way to make a tree. Okay, any more leaves on yours? I think that's going to do it for mine. Maybe a couple down here, a couple here. There we go. We are finished with our landscape. Isn't it wonderful? Take a look at your picture. Do you see the hills moving? Do you see the heat of the sun rippling through the sky? Do you see how the smallest tree you drew in the background appears to be the farthest away? Do you see the biggest tree you drew in the foreground appears to be the closest? This is perspective. We are using all of the space in this picture to draw our landscape. This is so Van Gogh. This is the way he would have seen the world. By learning perspective, you have learned some of the magic of art, some of art's secrets. I hope when you now look at the world, you will see art's magic is all around you. You are an artist. Well, that's the end of our lesson. I hope you've enjoyed drawing your landscape. I'm sure Vincent van Gogh himself would be very proud of your work. I know I am. Okay, we ready to wrap it up, Ryan? Yeah. Let's sing our song. Do art, do art, doodly do, do art, do art, doodly do. Just grab your paper and your pencil too. You can grab your marker, scissors, and your glue. You can do art, you can doodly do, do art, do art, doodly do, do art, do art, do what? Art. You're smart. Yeah.